So the Mahal month of Shvat has been dedicated uh, by Nitz and David Jerome, memory of Sarah Leah Bas Yechiel, uh, and Joni and Moshe Palak, memory of Shimon ben Moshe, Tzvi ben Mordechai, and today's your site. Shira Rachma Bas Reb Alter Nas and Nata. That's Shira Pransky that we were talking about in Motzei Shamis. That's today's your site. It's honor in, our, in honor of the Eagle family Shvat birthday, anonymously in honor of Shirat David community. This week, Stephanie and Charles Sakal, in honor of Simon's birthday, Adnav Vesrim, Kenya Yibun. Shira and Ari Gantav, memory of Shira's grandfather, Daniel Moshe ben Chaim. Esther and Shalom Parnas, memory of Phyllis ben Ezra, Pina Perl, Bas Yisrael Verifka. Rachel and Mordechai Wilk, in memory of Mordechai's father, Avram Gershon ben Yaakov Yosef Halevi. And in honor of Rebetzin Bina Katz's birthday today. Oh. Happy birthday! Oh. All right, brothers. Ayn Dalit. Yeah, she loves when I can, when I refer to her as Rebetzin Bina Katz. Okay. Daf Ayn Dalit. The last thing we learned was that in access to Pnimia Salev, and uh, don't worry, I didn't forget what you said to me, is, is by, no, no, it's sitting on me heavy, you should know, <laughs> in a good way. The learning of Midrash, the learning of Agada. Remember, we were learning that he's talking about learning in Yaakov, learning the Midrash, learning Agada, the, what it does to our imagination and visualization, which is basically the whole, the whole chapir, the whole Torah here, is that it plays a very, very big role. And today we're going to have a. It's not going to. It's it's not going to be one of these hard, difficult, brainy shiurim. Although whenever I said that in the past, those are usually the hardest shiurim. So I don't know. I've set myself up. Maybe I'll I'll break the. Uh, the, 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 this Indian, but what we're going to see today is a very, very important and beautiful piece of Zohar, which is going to take the learning of Midrash and Agada to show us wh- why is it like that and how is it like that? How is it like that this, how the Torah shows herself to us and in what manner does this, what does it do to our minds? Like, like on the minds level, okay. So, on Da Feindal, you see that the, the, the top paragraph here is the whole thing in Aramaic, but he basically... He, he explains it on the bottom. We're going to go right to the bottom where it's an explanation of what it is on top. Okay? Azar HaKadosh Megala Lano Bazet HaSeder Asher Boa Torah Megala Et Atzma Beit HaMatzponea Shel Ish HaYisraeli So the Zohar HaKadosh is revealing to us the order in which the Torah reveals herself and her secrets to the Yid. Matzponea. You know, what, what, what word on Pesach does that sound like? Tzafun, right? What is Tzafun? Hidden, right? Matzponea, her hiddenness. The order in which the Torah reveals her hiddenness. Amazing. Modern Hebrew, yeah. Lo lekulam, 
רק לאוהביה מגלה היא עצמה. The Torah doesn't reveal herself to everyone, but only rather to those who love her. יודעת התורה את החכם לב, אשר כל היום מסבב הוא את פתח ביתה, מפני שמשתוקק לראותה. The Torah knows the heart of the wise, who basically is, this is like a mom is just seen from a movie. Um, actually, Mayor Banai has a song, a mama sham, like, uh, it's called Kama Ahava, where basically someone that comes to the house every day to, to see if he can get a peek of his beloved through the window, right? The Torah knows the Chacham Lev, Asher Kol Ayom Mesavev Hu Et Petach Beitah. He's making, you know, he's pretending that he has somewhere to go, Ke'ilu. Not really, but he's, he's going around and around. And he's Mishtokek Lirota. He's longing, he's longing to see it. Umayi Yosa, and what is, he, what is the Torah doing? Megala Et Panea Elav Min Heichala. So the Torah is revealing itself, right, from its Heicha. What does that mean? Hainu She'ena Yotzes Elav. ולא מכנסס אותו אליה, it's very from, she's not coming out to see him, she's not bringing him into the house, very צנוע, רק גילוי מעט פניה לבד כשהיא בתוך היכלה. Let's say the Torah, is, it's, she's in her היכל, he could see her, he could spot her, but she's kind of like covering her, it's like Mayor, I love you, it's driving, it's driving me crazy, you gotta stop it. Yeah, yeah. Basically, this Hatzatzah, it's like, it's like this like, Like a, let's say you have a scarf, like it's covering the whole face. So it's like showing a, an eye or showing like... That's what he's saying the Torah is like. Like the Torah revealing herself, like the woman that's revealing a part of her beauty to the one that's trying to see her. Like we feel that quite often sometimes when we're trying so hard, trying so hard to, like, to, to get into the Torah. So he's saying over here, this is the order. Like first you come and you hang out in the basement Medrash. Then you come to a shir. We have to keep on coming back. You have to keep on coming to the base mentors. You've got to keep on coming to the shul. You've got to keep on coming back and coming back and coming back. And every time you come back, it's like the Torah is revealing, revealing another tefach, another tefach of herself. This is the Zion. Again, And it's, it's, uh, it's just like sending messages, but, but through remazim, through hints. And right away, right after it reveals itself, goes back and closes... Shuts the, you know, let's say it shuts the vilon, it shuts the, the, the blinds, the uh, drape, right? You could be with a million people, but he's the only one that actually was taking a look at this and seeing this. Sometimes you could be sitting in a shir with 80 people, and you're the only one that's experiencing the gilui, the revelation, that the, the, the kala, the Torah Kedosh is revealing itself. Everyone's there, but no one was looking. Like everyone was there because it's the right thing to go to a shir, but one person's there because it wants to have the Torah Megala itself to him. Different kind of zach. You know the story how Ben Sion Solomon became a breast lover? Became, a, became like a frum yid, you know this story? 1970. Shiva Sabatamas, you're going to love this story. This is a Gavad story. I think you know this. Shiva Sabatamas, 1970. Ben Sion Solomon is up in, in, he was living up in, in, in Northern California. And um, he, his car broke down. You, know, you heard him tell this story? His car broke down somewhere. Whatever, he found, he found the house. They told him, go to the house of love and prayer in San Francisco. He didn't know the Shavuot Sebet He comes inside the house and he says, oh, it's amazing. I've, you know, it's a long story. But basically, he, he said, do you, do you have any food or drink here? He said, well, it's so fast. We don't have any physical material. We don't have any actual food or drink. But there's spiritual food and drink in the backyard. So he goes to the backyard. And he sees there, a Rav, that he, I think he had seen him years ago, as a, when much younger in New York at a concert. And he sees that he has a huge book on his lap. And Ben Sion is uh, sitting there, and he's listening to every word. And I guess at a certain point he's wondering, what is anyone else doing here? Because this, is just, this was just for me. That sefer was Likute Maran. Right? And then, and since then, he's been a breast of Chassid for over 50 years now. Meaning, the Torah was Megala herself at that moment because he was also looking. Right? He was also looking. He was looking. And I think we're, we're in a generation that this hasn't changed. Like, we have access to more and more Torah on the, our fingertips, literally, more and more. But the, the Shaila is, are, what, are you looking for the Torah to reveal itself? Or do you want to be able to say that you can make a sin? Sorry. 
That was a little bit intense, I know, but mm-hmm. let's just call it. It is what it is. In Malasat, right? This, this is big stuff. The Torah is Megaleh herself. And if, if that's the inyan of the Torah Megaleh herself, then you see it. But it starts off very little. Very, very little. Very, very little bit. That's the imagery the Zohar Kodesh is saying. Weiter. So again, Kol Ashar Shayusham Lo Yadu Velo Yistaklu Raku Bilvado Umeav Velibo Venafsho Hochim Achareya his kishkas, his heart, and his soul are following her. And with this, the Torah is revealing itself, and then it's concealing itself, but it also follows with love towards the one that loves her, to awaken within it love. See the order. This is the order of the Torah, the last way of life of the Torah. When the Torah begins to reveal itself to a person, it sends it messages. And think about your own private life, how this happened. It starts to send it messages. If a person knows, meaning if he understands what the remez was, that's great. But if he's not picking up on the messages, sholachat lo v'koralto peti. And but if he doesn't, so she goes and calls him a peti. How does he call it? Then? Fool. Ve'omeret a Torah lemishe shalchalo imru lo to peti sheikraven aveidaberimo. Tell this fool to, to 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 come close. What is he doing? Kamo shekatuv mi peti asur hena chasay lev. The pasuk in in in, in Mishli. Uh, how does he say that? Whoever is foolish, turn aside here. Whoever lacks a heart. But if a person does then come close and begins to speak with her, she begins to speak with him behind the curtain, curtain that, he, that she prepared for him. Then she starts to say things in accordance to where he's at until he actually starts to look at her much deeper, much more intensely, much more focused. He says, Zeh, who, Drash. That's Drash. He, he, he's, he what he's doing. He gave us Remez. Now he's explaining what Drash is. Hainu she'izgalus anemera kan m'shatorah mitgala le'i shu'alidei medrash. So he's saying this revelation, that the Torah is revealing itself to a person, this is what's called midrash. Right? Now, interesting, midrash comes from the word lidrosh. What does lidrosh mean? To seek out. To seek, right? Ani doresh. I'm, or dema- even, even a stronger <coughs> lashon. It could also be to demand. Drisha. Ani doresh etze. Right? It doesn't just mean I'm learning. <laughs> So the PSS is saying is so beautiful. I mean, he, he's going to develop this, but you see what it is. Midrash comes from a place of listening, even after you didn't get the first remas, but you're listening to come close. Come closer, let me speak to you to, on the level where you're at. That's Midrash. That's Lidrash, okay? That's what he's saying Midrash is. So is we had this a, interchangeable for just Hashem revealing himself? Like in the world, in our situations, like if I'm going through... Not necessarily learning, but just everyday life, and I get like a, like, for example, if I lose my job, like it seems bad in the moment, but it could be like opening a gate for something else. Is that? Like, I mean, what you're saying the, here is it? Like this is the Shaila. Thing. When you say when you say the Torah, what are you referring to? Yeah. Right. So some people say Torah is only when I'm learning Torah. Mm-hmm. Some people say, well, if I'm really learning Torah, while I'm learning Torah, then that's the way that I'm, that through those lens, I'm looking at everything else in my life, too. Mm-hmm. So the answer to the question would probably be, yeah, yeah that's the goal, I think. You know? mm-hmm. Like, that's the goal that every single, the way that I'm learning, what happens to me while I learn is the way that I function when I'm not physically, when I'm not in front of a safer and learning. Mm-hmm. For sure. Take the base midrash with you wherever you're going, you know, wherever you're going in life, with every conversation. Okay, so that's midrash. Ve'acharkach, you see those words, ve'acharkach? It's right smack in the middle after the brackets where it says Midrash. 
The Haggah here says, Shushifa Simla Le Perush Aruch. He says over there, what? That afterwards? I'm not sure. Um, Agadic material, she reveals more via Agada. After them? And after he is used to being with her, she reveals herself to him face to face. No, no, not yet. Sorry. So okay. that, that was a little bit before that. So let's, let's, let's go again. She speaks with him from uh, behind a flying garment? That's what it is. She speaks to him behind the flying garment. Flying garment. Fine garment. simla daka. Hainu behastara yoter ktana vidgalut yetera. Now, she's talking to him with less concealment and utmost uh, uh, revelation. Divrei chida vehi agada. This is this is agada. Hainu hidgalut azot ayoter gdola. He alide agadeta. Now agadeta, what we were talking about with Ein Yaakov, is already. The, the, it's not going to be hard to feel connected. That's what we're saying. When you go to a shir at agada, right? It's not so hard to feel connected. When you go to shir on shnayim ochzin and you're trying to learn a sugya, you have to work much harder to feel that the Torah is revealing herself to you and has to do with you and it's connected to you and evichule evichule, or you feel connected to what the words are saying. But when it comes to agada. You feel, you can go to any Agada Shir and you can feel, wow, this is mamish, like, exactly, this. it's not concealed, it's not hard to feel that the Torah is talking to me. And, you know, what a, what, a, what a struggle it is for so many people, sincere people that really want to feel connected to Torah, they take on learning, and it doesn't work. Now, why don't they go to Agada or Midrash? Because, unfortunately, the talk is, oh, that's for, uh, you know, lo yutzlach, or... or uh, you know, that's for Shana Aleph. Oh, I was going, <laughs> right, I was going to say Shana Aleph. I'm just referring to the whole Shlomo. Right, right, kindergarten. Very good. If that's kindergarten and stuff. Mm-hmm. But really, are you kidding me? That's, that's the Torah, that's the Izgalus, that's the Izgalus, the Torah revealing herself full on to your face. Mm-hmm. And now after he, 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 he's used to being by the Torah, and the Torah is revealing herself, Panim bepanim, full on. She's now telling you all her secrets. And all the ways of her life that she never shared with anyone. <coughs> that, that, that's been hidden within her for years and years and years. Hainu Kabbalah, the Soda Satora, the Az also Aish Baal Torah Shalem Bala Bais Vadai, the Akol Sodas Shela Gilsola, the Lo Yechika, the Lo Kista, and Meno Klum. What happens to you? You become a balabas. You become now an owner of the home. You're holding. Now I know for many people, talking like this about the Torah is so bizarre, and it's not the way we usually refer to Torah, but the way this mashal, the czar is bringing it, hits home because we could relate to this. You know, Evyatar has a song like this. Evyatar Banai has a song that's really hard to, to daven with because it's, it's basically, it sounds like a love song, but then he keeps on throwing in Aramaic phrases here and there, because, showing you that he's really talking about the Torah. The song is called Oraita. Okay? And he has lyrics in there. Listen to this. Ad she nifgashnu ani ve'at, ha'iti tzarich et ha'ke'ev. Right? Kedei lada, something like this. Aval achshav ani yodea kama omek. He says, before I met you, all I needed to feel my heart was brokenness. But now that we met... I have this, which makes me connect to my inner chambers of my heart. That could be, you know, if you didn't throw in the word oraita, you'd think that would be any, like, typical love song in there, right? But for our door, the sweetest thing would be is if we would be able to feel like this so close to the Torah. And what he's saying is that Agada and Medrash, all these things, are, they bring you to that state of, like, feeling rom- even romance, longing, passion, passion. Now, he's not Khalila saying, God forbid. So therefore, don't bother with halacha because you're not going to feel, God forbid. He's talking about turning on the buttons, though. Being real, turning on the buttons. Again, he's talking to the possible distractions of a young, of a younger man, of an avreich in the 1920s and 30s in Warsaw and Piasetsna. The distractions of 100 years ago. What those guys had to do to really get distracted, can you imagine, versus what we have to do to really get distracted? It's an amazing thing. Right. It's an amazing thing. Now that's why the Lushan here is so, is so romantic and beautiful. So 
So the Torah tells to this person, Remember those remazim I told you before, those things you didn't really understand when you first started hanging out with me? Now go back to it. Now that you feel so close to me, now go back to it. And now you'll understand all the hints I was dropping when, when on the beginning of the relationship. Now go back and you'll understand it. And then he says, well, no, I need everything. I need everything of Torah, even the stuff that initially I wasn't following and didn't understand it was relevant to me. I can go back retroactively to all the Torah I learned that seemed that it was just dry or that it didn't, or that it didn't seem that it was speaking to me. But then when the Torah reveals herself in its full most openness, like we reached with Medrash and Agada, I then go back to Alacha or whatever else it was, and I'd be like, oh my God, you were talking to me also through, 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 through learning Hilchos uh, Beis or whatever, whatever it is, right? Whatever it is. That's our Emunah and the Torah. So beautiful, so beautiful. Hainu gam nigle, kevan shebechol echad yesh kama sodos or remazim. There's secrets and hints in everything. Well, if he said, al yidei ha-medrash, Pnimius at Torah Yosem is Gale. But through the Midrash, the Pnimius of Torah is more revealed, Valide Agata Odiote, through Agata even more. Be'az Zoche El Kabala Vizgale Sasodos. Then you already reach a place where you're seeing you're seeing things. Not not in a not in a weird, trippy way, in a very clear, you know, straightforward way. You're seeing it. It's very clear. It's right. Everything you're learning is talking to. You could be Reb Zusha. And you could faint when you hear the words Vaidabra Hashem and Moshe Lamor. Because you hear all the secrets that ever existed in creation from a Pasuk that we just read every Shabbos, Vaidabra Hashem and Moshe Lamor. Right? The stuff that Kidu Kivyachal you thought you already had under your belt, you're learning just a very basic, you always learned a very basic Pshat thing of it. Never really felt that it was speaking to you. But all this stuff now, you go back and you see every word of Torah you ever learned was, was, was really Shayach to you. Remember, Rabbi Nachman says that a person, all the Torah he ever forgot, it still counts because when he go to the Cheshban of Al Haba, you get everything back. You, you remember everything. If your learning was Lishma. Okay. No, so he's going to keep on pounding home this Indian of learning, learning Medrash, learning Agada. Very, very important. Look what the Ariza, look, what, look in, the, in the name of the Ari in the Sefer Migdash Melech, it tells us like this. It's good to study Agada every single night. But most of the mysteries of the Torah are hinted in the Agadot. He brings in the name B'Shem Or Yisrael Shebishvil Kach Shibayach Hazor Agada Yoder Yoder Meadrash Ayin Sham that the Arizal. Let's see if I'm, I'm reading this correctly. Revi b'shem or Yisrael shevishil kach shibeach hazor agada yoter madrash. That sefer says that you see why the Zohar praises agada more than drash. Ube igres hakodesh me'arav zatzal. Just to test you guys, who is he referring to when he says the letters of the Rav? Balatania. Right, the Balatanya. Whenever we already learned, whenever he says the Rav, he's referring to Balatanya. So it says, by the letters of the, of the Balatan, Ya'ita utnu kavod l'Hashem alokechem b'terim yachshich. Give kavod to your God before it gets dark. Mm-hmm. When is that? Da'ayinu ben mincha l'mariv kol yimol sachol. That's why I, find it, I, found, I felt it very important, one of the reasons that we should be learning between mincha and mariv, not, you know, like, b'met, uh, something that we could really walk away with every single day between mincha and mariv, and not just like 30 second, 30 second back-to-backs. Because this, this, listen to this. Give cover to Hashem terem yachashich right before it gets dark. Ainu b'mincha l'mariv kol yimosachol li'ilmod ba'asara pnimius atora shi agada shebesefer in Yaakov shelov sodes atora gnuzim ba umechaperes avanosav shel adam k'mavur bekisvi ariza and that's why we still have to do what, what was proposed last week. Gam besefer yakodesh shel chasidus tar beleayin. Also, others form of Hasidus learn a lot. Avazel vayikar, shelo b'sha'a shata lomed b'hem levad, rak gam tarbe lachshov b'inyanim shelaita shama. This is connected to what you said. The ikar is not just to think about it while you're learning it. 
The Iker is to think about the Pneumius of Torah when you're not learning it. Meaning when it's not, some, when it's not you're not in a shear. Listen, shear, I like, I like when you sit by shrinks also, like, it's like getting high. Like you think, you think it's all solved. You, the whole thing is solved. And the second you walk out, you're like, what was that? You know, wait, wait, wait a second. How come? How come the, the solving? How come the puzzle is now? How come the pieces aren't together now? Right? So he's saying that's why the ikker is not while you're sitting and learning. The ikker is once you're out. That's really what. What uh, you were saying? Did you take your Friday night with you to the house? Bidiu nafemal. Lo bilvad kedeshet iskol. The third line. Lo bilvad kedeshet iskol lekayem et hakatuv shama. It's not just that you have to remember to fulfill the stuff you learned in Pneumius, what you learned, but he says, which is the point of the Sefer. But it's in order to sanctify and strengthen your mind. Like, this is the question, how often throughout the day do any of the concepts that we learn in these shiurim pop up? I remember a few years ago, Hershey was very big on this. He would send out these, like... (laughs) I mean, I don't know who was here then. I don't think any... Wow, is that a, a, a beautiful new chavra. Hershey, uh, Ari, I think you remember a little bit that Hershey would send out these, like, check-ins throughout on the... On the, yeah. on the right? He would do these check-ins, like, two or three times a day for a while, checking in on to see if anything that we learned popped up with us throughout the day. It was the, the heart... He was the last person to try to give Musser, but it was the harshest Musser, right? <laughs> it was so intense because, you know, the, you know, here, it's just about feeling high, and then, then the real, then the world, right? Then the world. Lopashut. He says, because he says, this is not just to remember. Don't tell me, oh, I remember what it said in Shir. I'm thinking about what was said in Shir the other day. Kedei lekadesh ulechazeket machshavcha. You you actually send me a lot of these notes sometimes. You do. The thing that I could say that, you know that that, that the Torah I'm learning in the morning or whatever it is that I'm learning that I'm, the way I'm thinking about it is purifying and strengthening my mind. Do I have to do I have to believe in it? And then I you know when I do that then I can connect the dots throughout the day and the day doesn't seem so empty. Yeah. What do you want to say? That's not what he's saying. He's actually saying the afuch. He's saying it's not only to see if I am applying it to my life. He's saying again. The words are. I think about it. It's what he said. He said lo because that's an easy way out. If I say I'm applying it to my life, but I'm not really thinking about it that much, <coughs> check. Do you need to think about it or to apply it? You would think so, right? Only if it comes up. Exactly. Exactly. Only if, you come, only if there's reference. Only if it's relevance. That's not what he's talking about. Because it's, it's a very important thing. How many of us... Okay, you put on tefillin today, right? Did you, did you apply it in mitzvah? You applied what you learned? That you have to put on tefillin? You applied it, right? How much were you thinking about what was happening to your mind and to your, and to your heart with the putting on of tefillin. Now, I'm not testing you, I'm saying this is just what, this is just what the, the, the chalukah is between the two, right? You're still wearing it. Uh, huh? You're still wearing You're still wearing it, but, you're, but they're not on. <laughs> that's good. Mm-hmm. Is that, you said that? You said that? No, no, I want to make sure that that's your quote, because that's coming, that's the name. Copyrights, this is like, <laughs> you're going to see a great, uh, you know, whatever it's called today, a meme or... You're wearing it, but it's not on, not in. Yeah. fourth line. We've already asked you, don't be ashamed of yourself. He's talking about to the younger man. Don't be ashamed that you don't feel close to all the stuff you're doing. He's saying, Bacher, instead, a younger man, wouldn't it be great if instead of all the mind, the mind bilbu that's happening in your mind during the day, wouldn't you, want, wouldn't you rather the mind be wandering from holy thought to holy thought to holy thought to holy thought? V'im bidvar seichel, iyun v'amkut ha'gmara v'tosfot, kashelecha l'akuf et machshavcha, l'achshov b'em b'shot ha'pnuyot, 
בדברי אגדה המושכת את ליבו של אדם, וכן בדברי חסידות, למה זה לא תחשוב? It says, I understand, it's not easy learning Gemara all day long. It's not easy to apply these thoughts into the way that you're thinking, although I get it. But Baruch Hashem, we have a whole world of Torah. We have a sea. <coughs> Chaim David has a great, we're doing a lot of name dropping this morning. Chaim David has a great, great song. Try to find it. It's called Jump Into the Sea of Torah. It's an old Chaim David nigger. It's a great song. Jump Into the Sea of Torah. And the hour is the 15 minutes that you have vacant. And even when you're taking a walk, and if it starts to get hard, he says, don't you know, that it's easier being, how does he say a it there? A thoughtless and unrestrained wretch. <laughs> Heaven Con- forbid. Continue the sentence. <laughs> then to be limited solely to the good way, the way of goodness and chasidim. Uh, uh, chasidim. Wow. Say that again, just the beginning again, which is so good. Yeah. Also, if you find this hard at first, consider it. Consider that it is easier to be a thoughtless, an unrestrained wretch, God forbid, heaven forbid, <laughs> can be right. limited lowly, solely to the good way. Aval, well. But when this becomes your way of life, meaning that you see that you're thinking more and more about the stuff that you learned that really went to your heart, which he's saying is probably going to be a product of agada before it'll be something of shas and poskim, mm-hmm. right? And you see, this is more, I'm just, I'm swimming in this throughout the day. I'm thinking about this more and more, right? You know how many messages I got this morning of friends that were so angry at themselves that they, they got so excited seeing LeBron pass Kareem this morning? Where that happened? Baruch Hashem! Oh, that happened. Oh, that happened. That's the whole Indian. So they're saying, I, I, it's in me. Like these are, I, I wish I didn't think so much about this Indian. I wish I didn't think so much about this Indian. But, but so, what, 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 what does someone like that need? What, what a beautiful, it's a beautiful thing to, to, to be in this place, but what they need is to be like, so what would be something that would occupy your thoughts more? Right? That would, you'd spend more time with your thoughts and it would become ragil to you, right? The Rebbe is saying, believe in our, our Torah is big enough. The Torah is big enough. The world of Torah is big enough. The world of Pdimius Torah is strong enough to get, your, to get your head to like be misragil, to have a, a natural habit of that all day long. This is, you know, more or less what's going on in your mind. Like it's so hard to like uproot. It's very easy. I don't care about LeBron. I don't care about LeBron. It's not just with the Knicks or whatever. Oh yeah, I know. I heard about it. Moscow says, who's LeBron? Asherecha. Five lines from the, from, from the, from the end. This is what we're going to end here. This paragraph. Find your own hacks. Figure out your own hacks, your own, hacks, your own tactics, to see how to get your mind to be in a rhythm of thinking about things that sanctify and purify the mind. After... after a little bit of time of having fixed times of, think, of getting into the notion of this. Guess what's going to happen? It's going to be impossible for you to just, you know, spend time hefker in your mind. It's going to be impossible for you to actually, like, spend time where thoughts of holiness don't enter into your consciousness. The person that reads it is like, ah, he doesn't know me, right? He doesn't know me. The Rebbe knows you. The Rebbe knows me. He knows us. Nah, he doesn't know me. He doesn't know what I've seen. He doesn't know what I've done. The Rebbe knows you because he believes in the Torah. It's simple. The Rebbe knows us. He knows us. God. And when he knows us because he believes so much that the power of the... Specifically here, where he's talking about Midrash and Agada, really Agada, saying that is so powerful and magnetic and speaking to the, to the soul of a person. And the way that they feel the Torah is really talking to him, meaning he believes in the beauty. Let's go back to the imagery. He believes that this... Figure this woman is so beautiful that it'll be moshech enough, it'll be attractive enough to get you in. 
That's what he's saying about the beauty of the Torah. That it's that beautiful once she removes more and more of, a, of, of coverings over the face. It's an, it, he believes that it's powerful enough to get you in. You know, my Rosh Yeshiva, he should be well, Rav Bravender, he used to say that a lot about like, he, he said, I don't, he said that, he doesn't think that Mechan can believe enough that the, that the Torah is beautiful and strong enough on its own and that they have to malbish it in all these different ways to try to get someone to feel connected to it. He said, we, all we have to make sure to do is try to get the person in the relationship. Let the Torah, let the beauty of the Torah and the strength of the Torah do its thing from there on. And I, 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 he used to say this when I was in yeshiva in different words. I didn't understand what he was talking about. Ten years later, someone was conducting an interview with him and he said it again. And I realized that was mamish his mahalach. His mahalach is, believe enough in the Torah, just make a hekerut, make a... Uh, yeah, make an introduction. Make an in- just make an introduction. Believe enough in the power of the Torah, the beauty of the Torah, that it'll <coughs> conquer the, the eye of the beholder and it'll bring the person in. But the but Rebbe is saying, now that you're in, make sure, you, make sure you're going for ever the gold and make sure you want to see more. So how do, we, how do we get that passion to want to see more? That's why he's speaking about the, the importance of Agadah. And then eventually you'll realize, well, I can't stop thinking about these things. Eventually, at a certain point, this is going to be what you're thinking about all day long. The, you know, I, I see, as a musician, I could say that before you go into the process of the, being in the studio, making an album, so you think about it when you're thinking about it, about the album. When you're in the album process making, you're thinking about it even when you're not in the studio. It's so, mamash, like I see it mm-hmm. very strong. And if it happened to happen to you, that you walked in the street once and you weren't thinking about Torah or something holy while you were walking, you're actually going to feel, now again, chet, I want to say, can mean leachti, you're missing the point of life. Not chet, you should feel ashamed of yourself and you're sinning. But you're going to feel like, wow, I'm missing the I'm missing the purpose of being alive right now. I'm missing the purpose of being alive right now. As if right now, you didn't show up for a chavrusa. You're saying eventually we're going to get to a place that when you're walking and you're doing your thing and you're not thinking something at Torah, it's going gonna, it's gonna to be something so precious to you that you'll be like, oh my God, my chavrusa is waiting. I, I let, he's been waiting, sitting there for 20 minutes. It's no chavrusa, it's just you and your thoughts walking on the street. But he's saying that's how much the Torah is going to make you feel close to it. So I just give us a bracha, a levai, we're talking about hiskachos, hiskachos, hamachshava, we're talking about all these ways and tactics to get ourselves to have strong minds and strengthen our minds. And Baruch Hashem, I'm so proud of the Chavir that I, I just see more and more learning every day. It just blows my mind, mamash. Anyway, we should have a lot of hiskachos with the learning, with our learning, and it should definitely leave with us as we leave the base Medrash. And it should be the way of our life. Pashut Me'od. So much so that when, I, when it doesn't show up for a few minutes, I should feel like I'm missing the purpose of being alive. All right. Shukrach, everyone. So beautiful. So beautiful. This is so beautiful. Which is my... Like, what, what, would he, you know, what, what would he write today, you know? That's people go to. I saw, I saw five kids, probably.